Welcome back everybody. Back in 2018, I uploaded a video about my version 2 of a, of a Wi-Fi light switch that was dimmable, that kind of stuff. Um, generated a fair amount of interest. I never really did more on it or published my you know, design or, or how, how to make it work. So I thought I'd do a video on that because it seems to have generated quite a bit of interest. Um, obviously, anytime you're working with uh, house current power, it's very dangerous. This is, you know, at your own risk kind of project. Just go through pretty much this is all the parts that are in the light switch. We got an ESP M3, um, nice compact ESP uh, module that's your Wi Fi, your controller programmed with Arduino. What's nice about that is it doesn't need any pull-ups or anything to operate. You give it power and it works. A few buttons, momentary switch to operate the light. Triac. Right here we have the H11A1. We use that for zero cross detection. This here is an optically isolated triac that we actually use to drive this other triac. For lower current operations you could just use that directly, honestly. Um, and the variety of resistors, we got a 470 ohm resistor, uh, 247k resistors, 1k, and a 220 ohm one. Uh, we have obviously some PCB board, some wires I cannibalized from a cord for a PC, just some standoffs. Uh, here's essentially the box switch I already have the button mounted in here. This goes in here like so. That's your momentary button to turn the light on and off. That, obviously everything goes inside this box and then you lid essentially clamps on. Alright. This is essentially the top view of the switch from the top of the circuit board. But right here, since we're cutting it out from the bottom side, we need a mirror view. So, this is the one I'm going to use to uh, put on my PCB. Just going to attach it on with a glue stick, stick it right on there, and drill out the holes. All right. I went back and I remastered my uh, cutout pattern a little bit. To fit more of what I'm doing now for cutting out PCBs, which is I'm just using this grinding wheel here, this cutoff wheel. So I made more straight lines where I can just do them in quick cuts. I also kind of filled in spaces that uh, should be removed. Some of these spaces are optional. This will give better antenna coverage. This is just more gap between the, the line voltage. To drill out the holes, I got a small drill bit. And it came with like a kind of a little drill bit set. It's about 3 64ths. Just thought I'd mention that. Alright, with the drill bit I like to put it up a long way, pretty far in. With these small drill bits a lot of times they, they tend to wander and break off real easy. So, but Then I just drill it by eye.
Okay, I'm pretty much done here. Now I'm going to just cut out the profile uh, with the notches for the, the wire. I made a couple of mistakes that I think will be alright. Well, here we have it. It's all cleaned up. Polished. The traces are fixed that I can fix. I think we're uh, in pretty good shape for the next step. Um, next I'm going to actually do uh, the surface mount uh, sisters. And I'm going to do the opto, opto isolated uh, triac. So I'll cut off the legs that I'm not going to use. I'll put that on the board here. Just like this. Ah, oh, yes. So we'll go in right there. And the next one, the H11AA1, is going to go here. So we'll cut off the legs that aren't needed on that one. This will go like that. I'll solder them in place. Right. At this point, I've got these guys soldered in, the SP soldered in, and I'm going to add in the uh, 470 ohm resistor, the triac. Over here, we'll have the uh, where we plug in the uh, wire for the push button switch. The push buttons here and here are for kind of resetting unit and flashing it. They're actually optional if you already have it uh, set up and flashed before you solder it down. Uh, you can just do OTA updates. So we have to solder on the power supply yet. 3 volt power supply. Um, go right there. Alright, I finished soldering everything in. Um, came out pretty clean. I haven't tested it yet, so I'm going to do that first before I kind of well, I need to make a heat sink for this guy yet. Uh, I did pull out my old switch out of the wall just so I could use it as a reference. As you can see I made kind of a copper heat sink that just kind of wraps around. Uh, don't, don't even need it if you're using LED lights. Uh, with this, I'd keep it under 200 watts yet because it does heat up. But it seemed to be fine at 200 watts even. So, I'm going to hook this up. See if it works before I go in. When I hooked it up to test, it didn't work. I'm like, ugh. So I went through and I resoldered all the joints and checked everything over multiple times. Checked the, you know, data sheets for all the parts. As far as I could tell, everything was perfect, but it did not work. So finally I went back and uh, realized I had done some programming changes on the um, controller, on the software that I never tested and they were the problem not the not the circuit board or the soldering job or any of that was that was all good so unfortunately when I was re remelting some of the solder joints I did touch my solder iron to the uh, power supply melt corner here it all works fine yet I'll probably just fill that in with you know glue or plastic or whatever but it didn't go real deep so anyway it's hooked up. Obviously it's not plugged in right now or I'd be electrocuting myself because this would be uh, house current here. Uh, essentially, you short that pin to ground. That turn controls the on and off. Just I have a light that's hooked up behind the camera that I'm controlling. And it's dimmable. So you just... I guess you can't really see that from... Either way, it works now. Okay. So now I'm just going to put it in the box. We got the wires there. I'm just going to slip it in. Oh, it's a little dark in here. Oh, my lights don't come on. Just going to fold the wires over on the notches. Fit it into the box as best you can. Usually it all just lines up. And 
Hmm, might be a tight fit here. What is this? Okay, it's all hooked up. You can see that it has a blue glow from the blue light on the uh, ESPM3. The unfortunate thing about that blue light on there is it will burn out in a couple months. Obviously it doesn't have a resistor in line with it that's sufficient. If at all I can find a schematic. But uh, at first it starts out looking kind of neat. Light goes off, light goes on. Cycle through the dim. So pretty much where you leave off is where the dim stays. That's our dimmer switch. Right here is a relay variant of the uh, dimmer switch. Instead of dimming, of course, it just switches the relay, which is uh, normally open. Contact I'm using to a normally closed when you turn it on. We use that actually to drive an outlet for my soldering iron. The reason we want a relay version is if we're you know, driving something that's uh, not an appropriate load for a triac, such as perhaps fluorescent lights or a small motor. In theory, this could drive my pool controller or my pool motor, since it's rated for 10 amps. But uh, just wanted to show my relay variant of the same switch.